In the previous video, we talked in detail about the physical properties of alcohols and phenols. And now, it's time to move on to their chemical properties. These compounds do have some pretty interesting chemical reactions, especially alcohols if you see. It is a class of compounds that can act as both nucleophiles as well as electrophiles. And this depends on which bond is getting broken. For example, when the OH bond gets broken, alcohols act as nucleophiles as you can see in this reaction. Here, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom can attack an electrophilic species like say carbocation here and give us this intermediate and with the elimination of a proton we get the final product, right? Now what's happening here, the bond between O and H is getting broken. On the other hand, when the CO bond gets broken here, alcohols act as electrophiles and this is common when alcohols get protonated like in an acidic medium as you can see here now if you think about it seriously you can see this is again a consequence of the lone pair of electrons of oxygen atom right instead of attacking an electrophilic species it abstracts a proton from the acidic medium and gives us this protonated intermediate and this intermediate has a very good leaving group hidden inside it any nucleophile can attack this protonated alcohol and give us a substituted product and what's the byproduct here yes a stable neutral water molecule all right now what we'll do in this video is zoom into one specific type of chemical reaction that involves the breaking of the oh group and this reaction reveals an intrinsic nature of these compounds their acidic nature so let's go ahead and understand what contributes to the acidic nature of alcohols and phenols and what factors affect their acidity. So first off, what do we mean by acidic nature? In the context of alcohols and phenols, acidic refers to their ability to act as bronsted lowry acids. This means they have the ability to donate a proton. And for alcohols and phenols, that proton comes from their OH group, right? So when the OH bond breaks, the hydrogen leaves as H plus ions and what are we left with? An alkoxid ion or a phenoxid ion, correct? And the strength of an acid is directly related to the stability of its conjugate base. A more stable conjugate base means the acid is more willing to donate its protons and thus act as a stronger acid, correct? Now a simple way to test the acidic nature of a compound is by reacting it with active metals like sodium or potassium when an active metal like sodium or potassium reacts with a compound containing an acidic hydrogen or a hydrogen that is attached to an electronegative atom like oxygen or fluorine or even nitrogen the metal will lose electrons and the hydrogen will gain electrons to form the hydrogen gas and for alcohols and phenols this reaction would look something like this let's say we take an alcohol like ethanol and react it with sodium we would get the salt which is sodium ethoxide and evolution of hydrogen gas right and same thing happens in the case of phenols you can see a phenol reacting with sodium to give phenoxid ion or sodium phenoxide and bubbles of hydrogen gas forming and possibly hear a fizzing sound as well but remember folks it only tells us that these compounds are acidic and not how strongly one is as compared to the other correct so that's a cue that we need to go deeper into the topic and figure out what factors affect their acidic character and which is a better acid is it alcohols or phenols so let's begin with alcohols okay now the thing is alcohols are actually weak acids yes they are considered weak acids because the oh bond does not easily lose its proton because if you remember again we said that a molecule would want to lose its proton depending on how stable the resulting ion is, conjugate basis, right? So what do we get when an alcohol undergoes ionization? We get an alkoxid ion. Now, is this alkoxid ion stable? Well, not really, you see. What we have here is an oxygen atom with lone pair of electrons. You have a tiny oxygen atom that is attached to electron releasing alkyl groups. And these electron releasing groups tend to add more electron density onto this oxygen atom via inductive effect, right? Alkyl groups as we know are plus I groups. And because there is no place for all of this electron density to go except just stay localized onto an oxygen atom, 
like there is no delocalization or resonance or any other way by which we can disperse or spread around this charge density and that makes this alkoxide ion unstable and that is why this breaking of OH bond is not favored because the resulting conjugate base is not really stable. And what about the different degrees of alcohols? Let's say, how would you compare the acidic strength of uh, a tertiary alcohol with a secondary alcohol and a primary alcohol? Again, it comes down to the polar nature of the OH bond, right? The more electron releasing groups present, like in the case of tertiary alcohol here, more electrons get pushed towards the oxygen atom and this reduces the polarity of the OH bond. And what's the result of this decrease in the bond polarity? Well, it makes it harder to lose a proton, right? The proton now becomes less acidic. And somehow, if we still manage to get the protons out, I mean, the protons were somehow ready to leave, even then, what is the resulting ion? The resulting tertiary alkoxide is again highly unstable due to the concentrated negative charge from three electron releasing alkyl groups. This is just making it worse, right? And that is why the order of acidity here would be primary greater than secondary greater than tertiary. That is, primary alcohols are the most acidic and tertiary alcohols are least acidic. In fact, alcohols are even weaker acids than water. And to illustrate this difference in acidity, let's see what happens when an alkoxid ion is introduced into water. So the reaction looks something like this. You can see that on the left side, you have water acting as the acid and the alkoxid ion acting as the base, which is basically the deprotonated form of an alcohol, correct? And on the right side, we have the conjugate acid and base. And we know that an acid-base equilibrium will always favor the formation of the weaker acid and the weaker base. Now, is that happening here? So, for that, we'll have to verify using the pKa values. pKa of water is about 15.7 and that of alcohols ranges from 16 to 18. And a lower pKa means stronger acid, right? So, just by looking at these pKa numbers, we can clearly see already that water is indeed a stronger acid than alcohol. But how does this affect our equilibrium here? What is the actual impact of this difference in pKa values? You see, since water is a stronger acid on the left and alcohol is a weaker acid, the equilibrium naturally wants to move towards the right, towards forming a weaker acid and weaker base and this leads to a significant amount of alcohol and hydroxyl ion being formed. So you can see that this clearly demonstrates water's greater proton donating ability as compared to an alcohol or in other words that alkoxid ion is a better proton acceptor as compared to a hydroxide ion. So based on that, which among the two do you think would be a stronger base? Would it be sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide? What did we just say? We said that alkoxid ions are better proton acceptors, right? That means they are better bases, stronger bases than hydroxid ion. So that means sodium methoxide is a stronger base than sodium hydroxide. Well, that's about alcohols and now it's time to move on to phenols. And here's where things get really interesting. Now, we already established that phenols are acidic, correct? They produce hydrogen gas when they react with metals like sodium and potassium. But we haven't quantified it. We don't know how strongly acidic or how weakly acidic phenol is as compared to alcohols. Well, it turns out that phenols are significantly more acidic than alcohols. The pKa of phenol is about 10, whereas that of alcohols, as we said before, ranges between 16 to 18. Correct? Now, the question is why? What makes phenol more acidic than alcohols when in fact both of them have the same functional group? They both have the OH group, right? Well, turns out there are two reasons. The first being the carbon atom to which the OH group is bonded. So, you can see that this carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. It is much more electronegative as compared to an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. And it pulls electron density away from the OH bond, making this OH bond much more polar. Basically, because the carbon atom here acts as an electron withdrawing group, it increases the polarity of the OH bond and making it easier to lose the H plus ions. And not just that, look at the structure of phenol here. We have the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom that is in delocalization with the pi electrons of the benzene ring, right? The lone pair of electrons can delocalize with the benzene ring and this gives a positive charge on the oxygen atom. 
In other words, it again acts as an electron withdrawing group and increases the polarity of the OH bond. And that makes it easier to lose this H plus ions. Okay, now what about after it loses the H plus ion? Didn't we say that tendency to lose the proton also depends on the stability of the resulting conjugate base, right? So how can we compare the stability of the phenoxid ion that is formed after ionization with the alkoxid ion of alcohol? Okay, for that let's quickly look at the ionization of these two compounds, okay? And what did we say about alkoxid ion? We know that the negative charge is localized on the oxygen atom. Basically, alkoxid ion is not stable. We talked about that already. But what about phenoxid ion? Here, in the phenoxid ion, the charge is not localized on the oxygen atom. It is actually delocalized throughout the aromatic ring due to resonance. Look at this. We have these amazing resonance structures here, right? And this delocalization stabilizes the phenoxid ion further making this deprotonation or losing the H plus ions much more favorable. So this is why phenols are much more acidic as compared to a typical alcohol. But again look at phenol. Phenol is an aromatic system which means it is always affected by the presence of substituents whether we have an electron withdrawing substance or an electron donating substance and at which position are they located? Are they present in the ortho position or the para position? Now all of these can also affect the acidic nature of phenol. So that's why it's important to discuss the effect of substituents also on the acidic nature of phenol. And here again the logic is the same. Electron releasing groups or any group that decreases the polarity of the OH bond would obviously decrease the acidic character of the substituted phenol. And exact opposite happens with electron withdrawing groups like nitro groups. These groups increase the acidic strength by increasing or enhancing the polarity of the OH bond here. Now this effect of the substance is even more pronounced at the ortho and para position. And why is that? Uh, let's take this example. What exactly is happening here when we have nitro at the para position? Let's look at the resonance structures of paranitrophenol, actually more specifically paranitrophenoxidine. Correct? We're looking at the stability of the conjugate base. You can see that the negative charge goes onto the ortho position and then onto the para position. And here we have the nitro group. The negative charge further gets delocalized onto the nitro group. And you can see as a consequence, we have more resonance structures. And more resonance structures means greater dispersal of negative charge and greater stability. On the other hand, if we had this nitro group at the meta position, then look how drastically things change. We have fewer resonance structures here. Why? Because the negative charge is just going from ortho to para to ortho, right? But our nitro group is at the meta position. It is not able to effectively draw on the negative charge towards itself or in any way stabilize it. Because of this, because of the fact that nitro group is not able to stabilize or effectively uh, stabilize this negative charge, metanitrophenol would be less acidic as compared to paranitrophenol. And we can summarize all of this, the relative acidities of phenol and substitute phenols and contrast it with an alcohol in the table here. You can see that phenols are actually more acidic than ethanol. The pK value is 10 and alcohol or ethanol is 15.9. And if you look at the substituent effect, we can see that electron withdrawing groups like nitro group will actually increase the stability of the conjugate ion and make the molecule much more acidic right and if you compare it with an electron releasing substituent in that case again you can see that there's not much effect in the acidic character and if you compare between the different positions like paranitrophenol with metanitrophenol we can see that the position makes a lot of difference the position of nitro group especially at ortho and para is much more stabilizing and will make the molecule more acidic as compared to having the same group at the meta position